Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The frogs will boil themselves. There's a well-known old fable that describes a frog being boiled alive. It states that, if a frog is dropped in boiling water, it will hop out. But if it's placed in lukewarm water, it will be comfortable. Then, if the heat is turned up slowly, it will not perceive the danger, and will be boiled to death. In political terms, this translates into a slow increase, say, the slow rise of taxation, or the gradual removal of freedoms. But, there's another way to boil the electorate of the country have them become willing participants in their own demise. This method is a common practice in many countries, particularly the US. Americans have repeatedly been conned into begging for their Second Amendment rights to be diminished. The method is to make use of the media to shine a light on the horrific murder of innocents through the use of firearms. In recent years, this effort has been ramped up through regular senseless massacres of people, particularly children, in public places, such as schools and movie theaters. Whether or not these incidents are actually created by the ruling elite is a moot point. What matters is that their proliferation has been extremely effective in providing the media will the fodder to repeatedly ask, when is the government going to make the possession of guns illegal so that the killing will stop? Many citizens are wary of such suggestions, but countless others quickly take the bait and demand that the government do something. Eventually, this becomes a point of pride for many citizens, a badge of righteousness for standing up for those who have been victims. Through such efforts, the US Constitution has slowly lost its ability to serve as a limitation to government power. A proliferation of laws that redefine what the Constitution means has, over time, eviscerated the Constitution. Not surprisingly, those who support this effort are largely liberal, which creates a backlash from those who are conservative and vehemently oppose any erosion of the Constitution. Those who are liberal may reinforce their beliefs by watching propaganda networks on television and regularly pump up the dangers of the Constitution. Likewise, conservatives have their propaganda network, which can be counted on to reinforce their views. Whichever side Americans take on such issues, they would be wise to keep an eye out for what may be the next development in this wrangle. Those who dutifully watch the liberal news networks may soon see pundits despairing that the failings of the aging constitution must be dealt with. It must be updated if it is to serve changing needs. After all, the founding fathers cannot be blamed that they didn't foresee the existence of AK-47s. Surely, it falls to the present administration to correct the failings of the well-intentioned old document, Conservatives will probably be more cautious, but you might see pundits on their favorite network expressing frustration that the left is trying to erode traditional values, saying it has to be stopped before it destroys the country. There's no doubt the Founding Fathers were right. If the Constitution and its amendments are clarified once and for all, American liberty is on the line. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Americans, like citizens of most countries, love a good battle between good and evil. Every four years, a massive three-ring circus is staged, in which the political leader is decided, and both sports teams, Democrats and Republicans, go all out in seeking a victory on the playing field. However, in most cases, neither candidate is trustworthy or qualified for the job, but this is of no importance. The essence of the battle is not to select a wise and capable leader, but to win. Similarly, once the populace has been wound up on both sides to believe that only a pitched battle can re-establish the constitution or modernize the constitution, the battle shall be met. Right now, this might just seem like speculation. But the media campaign hasn't kicked off yet. For now, it's just pundits in the media complaining about the current state of things. We need pundits predicting that, no matter what side you're on, your side is bound to win. 
On the liberal side, social justice warriors should hit the media every day, pushing for change and assuring everyone that victory is certain once the battle starts. On the conservative side, pundits need to insist that the battle will be won decisively, but stress that it demands immediate attention or everything could be lost. The results won't be instant, but with enough repetition, eventually, Americans on both sides might not just suggest, but demand that the issue gets resolved. At that point, the government could step in, announcing a constitutional review. It wouldn't matter if most of those demanding it are media pundits. What would be presented is that a majority of Americans want this review to happen as soon as possible. While the initial propaganda might suggest that the review will focus on something like the Second Amendment, Americans will soon find out that the entire Constitution is up for debate. Every part of it could be questioned during the review. So, what would the outcome be? Each side will hope that their elected representatives will emerge as the heroes, but that is not how politics works. In truth, elected leaders do not seek to serve the public, but to dominate them. Invariably, their recommendations for change will be whatever transfers greater power to themselves. Both Democratic and Republican members will argue forcefully for the rights of the American citizen. However, in the end, a compromise shall be made, one in which the rights of the populace are diminished and the government has new powers to allow it to bypass the electorate in the future. If this does occur, the public will, in effect, boil themselves. They will have demanded that the government act, and, when the dust has settled, each side will claim some sort of victory, but will fail to understand that they have brought about their own loss of rights. It is hoped that, when the day comes that a constitutional review is proposed, Americans refuse to take the bait. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.